I'm just whooping ass. Put him in front of me, you're going to get him hurt. Till took that ass whooping that Kobe was supposed to take. Till, you should fight Kobe next just for making, just for him making you take that ass whooping. No lie. So, I got a crazy team, man. I don't have nothing to say to the haters. Everybody's asking me about Dana White. I ain't got no smoke with Dana White. You know what I mean? I'm just winning world titles. I'm defending titles. I'm trying to become the best in the world. I ain't got time to sit there and worry about if somebody mad at me or not. He didn't tell me he was mad at me. He didn't say nothing to me at all. I figured I did my job, and that's what I came to do. So, um, But the memes are funny, though. I just been in so many fights in my life, 50, 60 fights in my life outside the octagon, that fighting has never really been that terrifying to me. It was just something that we did every day. I did it for fun. I did it because I was in the gang. I did it because sibling rivalries in the household, you know, fighting on the street, nonstop fighting. So for the first time, I was nervous. Shit felt weird. I'm like, why am I nervous? I'll, ne I'll never get nervous. I know I trained. I know I'm in shape. I know I'm prepared. I know I'm ready. I know God got my back. You know what I mean? And I just called all the dogs. Everybody who was around me, everybody who was close, said, pray for me. I don't know why, but I feel nervous. Pray for me. I don't know why, but I'm having some doubt. And I'm honest, you know, you know, I can act, oh, never get scared, because people want to hear that, but that ain't the truth. Motherfuckers do get scared, for real. And I don't, I'm never scared of my opponent. I'm never scared of fighting. I'm never scared of, you know, if I'm going to lose. I've already had all these things happen. I'm scared of not performing. I'm scared of not continuing to have the platform that I've been able to have so graciously because I am the champion. Why is Ben Askren coming after you on Twitter today? Who? Uh, ben Askren, Funky, of 1FC fame, the former Bellator welterweight champion. You're not familiar? Nah, I'm not very familiar with that name. Okay. By the way, Does he fight in the UFC? No. Does he have a UFC title? No. Then I don't know why we talked about him. He went out there and he put on the performance of his lifetime, lifetime when everybody it seemed to be was against him, when everybody was rooting for Darren Till. I kind of feel like the UFC were as well. Um, Tyron, you know, he opened his mouth at the press conferences and things like that. He always gets booed. It's, it, it, it's, a, crazy, it's a crazy thing that he's not embraced more. You know, I remember Dan, Daniel Cormier used to be a guy that used to always get booed, but he's turned it around. Uh, Woodley. You know, he does play the victim a little bit sometimes, which is a hard thing for uh, uh, the, the, the paying public to get behind. But all that aside, you cannot get by the fact that Saturday night, he was incredible. The problem for Darren, this is what I think, and I'm, you know, I think I'd say this to his face, I'd say it to his team, I think they know. Problem was, Tyron Woodley is an outstanding wrestler, and he doesn't use it very often, because Till went out there, and as we say, he didn't land anything significant. I don't even think he really threw anything. And the problem is when you're facing a really, really good wrestler, it's hard to open up, right? Because especially being English, we're not used to those caliber guys of wrestlers. You know, we're not used to facing world-class wrestlers. I'm not saying Tyron is world-class, but compared to an English guy, he might as well be an Olympic champion. You know what I'm saying? Now, the English weekend wrestle, my level of wrestling now is at a decent level, but I've done MMA for a long, long time and only now is at a decent level. So when you go out there and you're fighting somebody that wants to take you down to the ground, you're very hesitant to let anything go because you, you're waiting for them to shoot. You want to defend the takedown and then start unloading with the hands. You saw it with me against GSP. I was very, other than the fact I had nearly had a broken rib, but whatever, that aside, um, I, I was hesitant to throw as well because I knew his entire game plan was to take me down. And that's what affected Till. That's why he didn't throw anything. And that's why Tyron was able to get off on him. Now, Tyron exploded. People talk about his speed all the time, but Jesus Christ, it was on display Saturday night. When he did explode, it was terrifying. He tried to take him down. He got the body lock. Uh, a very tall person like Darren Till is hard to take down with the body lock because the legs are still on the ground, and Darren did a good job of defending. But ultimately, in the second round, he must have thought maybe his coach, he said, listen, Darren, you've got to do more. And he rushed in to try and be aggressive. And of course, when he ran in, got caught with that shot, got put down. And the ground and pound from Tyron, man, those elbows, they were fucking brutal, man. Yeah. They were heavy, heavy, heavy elbows. I mean, that really sent a message to everyone in the division. 
Darren Till did well. He didn't give up. He was still fighting for position, still trying to improve his position. Tyron Woodley mounted at one point, and I thought, shit, here we go. That's the end. And I think Darren, again, managed to squirm, reclaim half guard or something. Uh, as we all know, if you saw the fight, it was a Doris choke. You probably read online. It was a Doris choke that finished it. But speaking of heavyweights, man, I've obviously got to ask about Cain Velasquez. We talked about him a bit here. Everybody wants to know if he's coming back. We've seen him at the WWE Performance Institute training there. We've seen him at some WWE events. Does he come back to fighting, in your opinion, or will he make the transition over to professional wrestling? Um, No, he's looking to fight. It's just a matter of his manager uh, getting the deal done for him. He's been looking to fight. He's been healthy the whole year. You know, he, he's, you know he's been healthy, and, and, and he wants to fight. So we'll see what the management and, and, uh, and organizations uh, do to, to get that to happen. But uh, he, he's, not, uh, he's not retired by any means. He's, he's never said he's retired. He's just... You know, he's just waiting for a deal. Is he in the that gym That makes often? sense for them. What's that? Is he in the gym often? He was in the gym quite a bit, helping Daniel. Uh, now he comes in every so often. Uh, he has a lot of things to do. He loves his family. He, he spends a lot of time with his son and, and uh, his wife, you know. So he's always been a family man. Every time people talk to me, they don't fully understand what a great family man this guy is and what his family means to him. They mean everything to him. So... You know, if he doesn't have a fight, he'll come in, stay sharp, you know, this and that. But if there's no fight coming around, he'll spend that time, quality time with his family. And that's, that's the way he will always be. One interesting angle for Darren Till, he basically took the entire first round off, Kenny. Calculatedly, strategically, this is what his approach was going to be, and I think there's some regret there, more regret for the, the big right hand of Woodley's that he uh, was out of place to be able to take, but he he says next time maybe he would warm up differently. We heard Eddie Alvarez talk about that recently, that strategically for him now going forward, he tries to get a full round in in the back. I don't know how you treated that warm up from fight to fight, but it seems like Till, you know, what the learning starts right away. And for Darren Till, he knows he needs to go in there maybe with a little more of a lather to get some things done early against somebody like Tyron Woodley. Yes, absolutely. I used to love a long warm-up myself. When I cut down to 145 pounds, that really was not possible. I wanted to save everything for fight night. I remember I was warming up for Jose Aldo for like 30 seconds, and my legs were cramping. My muscles felt like I just, you know, I felt like I just ran a marathon. I go, guys, that's it for the warm-up. I'm, I'm just going to chill here and, and wait. And so I don't know if it was due to the weight cut. Maybe he didn't have enough energy or just maybe improper uh, warming up and, and just thinking that he was good to go and I don't, right. who knows. But, um, yeah, I, th this game is so difficult. It, it's There's so many things that can go right and wrong, and, and you have to find what works best for you. Darren Till is still only 25 years old. It's amazing that at 25 you already fought for a belt. Uh, this is a guy that I believe will come back stronger and better. Why? Because of his post-fight interview. He's the guy who says, listen, yeah. I just lost to the better guy. That's it. When you see a person who makes excuses, oh, he, you know, when he hit me with that lucky punch, you know, I just wasn't able to recover. <laughs> I thought it was an early stoppage. You know, whatever it is, you know, it, they're not going to get better. They, they, they want to put it on someone else. And this right. is a very, very honest game that requires you to be just as honest to yourself. And Darren Till... Um, I, I thought was very honest in his assessment of the game. And, and, and it, it, it's...